As you scale your applications, you will write more code. And the more code that you write, the more bugs and errors that you will likely get into. However, the problem is that not all bugs and errors can be found directly and right away. Sometimes the error won't show or you won't catch the bug before deploying it. But luckily for us, we do have a couple of things that we can do to minimize this risk of deploying something to the web with a bug. And that is testing. And so what I'd like to do in this video is just show you how I test code for some of my software. Uh, the different types of testing and at the end I'm going to show you a little uh, trick you can do to a minimize the amount of testing that you do and how to manage any bugs and errors and with that being said if you like the video like and subscribe and let's get into it and so first things first right what is testing and this symbolizes testing right so the formal definition of testing software is basically just uh, checking if your application or software uh, runs as expected. However, my bro definition of uh, testing software, you could say, is that your shit runs good. And sorry for swearing, just, I don't know, just find it funny. But basically, your shit runs good. That's all you want, and that's why we test. It's for applications to be checked that they run okay. And by the way, the definition of testing and the use cases of testing, they're different in all aspects. I'm just talking from my own experience. I haven't worked at a big company, so I don't know how they do things. I'm just speaking from my own experience with my own work and my own projects and how I test my own applications. And before getting into how I test things and actually walking through uh, actual code and how I test it, um, there are three main testing, you could say types of testing that we can do with our software. There is unit testing, there is integration testing, and finally there is end-to-end -end testing. So first things first, let's go over unit testing. Um, unit testing is basically just, again, testing, but a specific component within your application and checking if that specific component alone works. And this is usually automated by developers. So for example, let's say we have a function where it's like an add button over here, and it's like A comma B, and the function itself is just uh, a plus B, we add two values. What we could add in a test function is a test version of this in a separate file, installing some sort of test application that checks that everything works fine. And basically the whole point here, this is the example we will be building on our own, is that the function works individually. If this comes out as fail, this one comes out as fail, we know that something is wrong. And again, for the most part, unit testing is the most popular one and the one I usually do, but there's these two that I'd also like to talk about. And basically here's where my expertise kind of goes away because I've never really done both of these. But essentially for integration testing, you can kind of think of it as a way to check that multiple components work together. While unit testing checks one component, integration testing will check how multiple components interact with each other. So for example, maybe we have like a function A over here and function B over here where this one is subtract and this one is add. Um, maybe we have like a third function where we have both add and like something like this. I don't know, I'm just, you know, where we add the addition and subtraction and we're using both. Integration testing will just test if these two work fine together and if any errors are coming along. And finally, we have our friend over here with end-to-end -end testing. Um, again, I have never done end-to-end -end testing, but basically end-to-end -end testing, it is just a fully automated system like you upload your code to a code base where they check if your code works so if you check over here this is what it would usually look like so you would upload this code and this ai automated system will go through every page click every button on your application and make sure that there is no errors no 404 errors 200 errors whatever it may be on your application and this one's usually the heaviest of the bunch because you're testing a whole application is it good yes is it needed not really for most of us. But regardless, these are the three main ones. And for now, we can just get started with actually implementing this test. And in the end, I have a little fun thing, or at least show you what I do with testing. And so here we have a regular math.js file. Um, this is what we used in the examples, but over here, you know, we just exported the add function. But regardless, this is just a regular function. You know, most of us will just have something simple like this. And let's say it's in a big application where we need to test this, right? When it comes time to testing the app, we'd usually just create something like a .test.js file. And by the way, I installed something called Jest. It's just a testing software. You just install it, it's completely free. And here we're just checking if our tests are working or not. 
So for example, here we're just grabbing the add function and in this test function, we are testing the function, okay? So let me just like be clear about something. Here we have a test function from just and within it, we're saying that adds one plus two to equal three is just a note. And here we're saying expect it to be three, expect the numbers to be three after you add these two numbers. So two plus one should equal three, right? Same thing here, negative one plus negative two should equal negative three. And so this is just unit testing and we're just checking the specific function for how the outcome is. And so to test this, all we need to do is just run NPM test and the outcome should be one failed and six pass. Now I did this on purpose, but I just wanted to show you that this is what comes out after running this test. And why we are getting this mistake is because of this over here. You can see that the outcome of five plus zero should be five, but we put it to six and you can see that it was failed. So if we put this to five now, right? And we run it again, NPM test, you can see that seven passed. So you can see, right, that this is very valuable. I know on a smaller scale, you know, we're just adding numbers, so it doesn't really matter. But imagine you have 10 files, 11 files, and there's like 200 lines of code, and you need to test that your function's outcome is what you need it to be. Maybe you want them to send something to a user, an API functionality, authentication, something like that. You want to implement some sort of test just in case something may work or not. Testing is valuable, and I think it could only take you so far, but as a developer, that does not mean that you can write bad code. I think testing is good for the most part, but again, a lot of the times, you also wanna have good management systems in place so that you can catch errors even faster. For example, this could be something like a catch and then, where you display a notification if something goes right or post a notification if something goes wrong. So for example, when the user clicks this button, I want the notification to display if it's failed or not. That's just one example, but have management systems in place like try catch blocks and dot, dot then dot catch. These just ensure that when you're not testing these smaller versions that everything goes right, that's all. But yeah, that's the video. If you like the video, then like the video. If you wanna join a group of developers with over a thousand developers, it's like a Discord group, best thing in the world. If you want a group of people just like you, then I'll leave that down below. And if you like this video, then check out the video on the screen. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.